Okay, our last speaker in this session is Dr. Alessandro Ricombini from DNA Nexus. And I think you may tell us a bit more about yourself, but you're the scientific lead for the Europe, Middle East, and African region for DNA Nexus. Yes, that's and right. DNA Nexus is an associate partner of Comp Biomed, just to make sure everyone yes, is aware. Thanks for having me. Uh, thanks to the organizers for inviting me. Uh, can you hear me well on top? Excellent. Uh, first introduction, I'm Alessandro. I'm a scientist from uh, DNA Nexus, from uh, our uh, European team. I'm based in Cambridge, but don't be fooled by my accent, I'm actually Italian. <laughs> so in the, in the next uh, half an hour or so, I will introduce you to DNA Nexus as a company, as a platform, and most importantly, as a network. And you will see why at the end of this presentation, then uh, our nature as a network is probably our uh, best main uh, value. And the, the company itself was founded uh, eight years ago as an academic spin-off. And today, there are 90 of us. Of these 90 people, around 52 are coders. Of these 52, 20 are bioinformatics and computational ch chemistry scientists to give you an idea. And actually, until uh, a few months ago, our sales team included two people. And the reason is that while other bioinformatics company will send a software engineer or a salesperson to talk to a customer, we always focus our interactions on customer problems. Uh, we heard from both, both from Amazon and from Azure today how uh, important the scientific question and scientific discovery is uh, uh, rather than just infrastructure. And as a, as a company providing secure and compliant cloud infrastructure, for us, uh, the, the, our main interest in our interactions with customers is really being helpful in sol helping them solve their problems. And uh, um, so uh, the science team I'm a member of really interacts with customers on a daily basis, trying to understand what they need, what solutions they're looking for, and uh, together with our partners, we work to make uh, these solutions achievable on our platform. We have five offices, uh, Boston, uh, Mountain View, our main office in San Francisco, uh, our Cambridge office, and uh, uh, another office in Shanghai. Um, we have more than 70 enterprise uh, customers uh, and uh, around 10,000 users, uh, and these numbers might seem low compared to others we heard, but uh, the scale of what these users are doing is quite interesting. We work with 13 of the top 20 uh, global pharmaceutical companies, and I will anticipate that in a few weeks uh, you might hear of the, the name of the 14th, uh, and uh, it will be quite uh, interesting uh, to hear. Um, and uh, we are uh, leaders in, uh, for uh, genomics infrastructure for American institutions like NIH and the FDA, and we'll get back to this in a few minutes. And as a company, as a cloud-based uh, uh, platform, we are multi-cloud and multi-region, meaning that uh, we work with different cloud providers, and for each cloud provider, we provide different regions. Our original deployment years ago was based on Google Cloud, and Google is still one of our uh, backers. And for a number of years, we work uh, uh, with AWS, uh, as they have been leaders for, for years in the public cloud market and two years ago we started our partnership with Microsoft and today in DNA Nexus you can uh, have a number of projects in the same environment for your own, uh, under your, your same profile and access projects based on AWS and Azure and it's really, we're really privileged to be working with companies like Amazon and Microsoft because they share our values regarding security compliance and most importantly, being useful for our customers. And, and this is really something that is at, at the core of the interactions we have with them. Um, DNA Nexus initially tried to solve a basic problem, secondary data analysis. Uh, as you might have guessed from our name, our initial uh, interest and uh, background was really around uh, DNA sequencing uh, analysis. And uh, uh, secondary analysis going from a sequencer from raw data to analyze variants or 
expression uh, counts was really the, the original problem we solved. And uh, as we were working on this problem, and as I said, the generation of sequencing data got cheaper and cheaper, the attention uh, moved from creating this data to processing it and analyzing it. And as the cost went down, the scale and the scope of pro projects in the genomics field escalated. And uh, you go from uh, something like reprocessing the entire cancer genome atlas, uh, 10, 000, uh, tens of thousands of samples, half a million of jobs. You go to uh, an interaction like the one Regeneron has with Geisinger. Regeneron provides the genotypic data, Geisinger with the phenotypic data. This is really the largest genophino integration project that you can find around, and it's done on the Nexus scale. And you might have heard a few weeks ago that GSK here in the UK is collaborating with Regeneron to uh, analyze uh, half a million exome samples which will go in the UK biobank. This data will be processed on the Nexus. And the interesting thing is that once the data is processed, the UK biobank will make it available uh, to uh, interested parties within nine months. And uh, uh, through discussions, uh, some of the other potential collaborators who are interested in accessing this data already have work done on the Nexus. And when the time comes to share this data, it will be a matter of uh, setting the permissions and sharing samples with the new, between pharma partners or institutional partners. And of course, there are even more ambitious projects. We heard the announcement of AstraZeneca's genomics initiative, 2 million uh, samples. This is uh, still uh, to come, but you can see uh, where we are going, and uh, it's only a matter of time before even more ambitious projects uh, come forward. And you can see that there's really a need to uh, solve the problem of handling and processing uh, this uh, huge amount of data so that we can all focus on the scientific question. And this is the problem in the Nexus is trying to solve at the beginning. It's a solved problem. Now the question is uh, how to move forward from the end point of, of, of this analysis. And I will get back to this in a few slides. I will just mention that as part of our growth, we have a, we created a partnership with Bushi uh, Nextcode. We, they are uh, one of our investors, actually. They sit on our board of directors. And with them, we operate in China. And uh, so, of course, uh, one of our regions is on AWS China. And if your data has locality restrictions for China, it, of course, you can. You can do this, and uh, uh, for, for that region we will be pushing. Uh, in this section, I will uh, in the, introduce the, the platform itself. Uh, as a company, despite uh, the name, despite uh, the bioinformatics, our main selling point is really security and compliance. There is no other company in the market for bioinformatics which has our same level of investment and excellence for data security. Uh, I've been in the cloud bioinformatics uh, market for a few years, and you will be surprised by how many companies are out there who claim we are secure, you can give us your sensitive clinical data. The truth is that these companies are using maybe AWS, and they say AWS is used, it has ISO certification, we use AWS, therefore we are certified ourselves, and you can just put clinical data on our platform, just believe us. And that, that's not the case, there's a lot more work that goes into that. And our, our platform has been really designed and built from scratch around the requirements of the ISO 2701 certification. Our staff is trained according to the requirements of uh, the American uh, Federal to have authorization to operate. And other platform features like having immutable data, multi-factor authentication, single sign-on, uh, full auditing and full provenance of everything that you do on the platform. This is all based around requirements for certifications like CAP, HIPAA, AGCP, and so on and so forth. This on top of the various certifications of the cloud providers. It's these synergies that really makes us market leader as a cloud informatics platform in terms of security. And I can guarantee that uh, when the time comes for security auditing, uh, it will be very unlikely that somebody else can uh, catch up with us, at least for now. 
and uh, I will probably skip this. Uh, the, with the, the platform, as I mentioned, is multi-region, so you access and consume storage and compute. Depending on uh, which uh, cloud provider and region is selected, you might be using a blob storage on Azure for one project or uh, S3 storage for uh, another of your project on AWS. Similar thing for compute for instance types. And you interact with the platform through uh, the uh, web UI and from the command line. Everything can be done programmatically. If you have to deliver uh, process data to some of your uh, collaborators, in theory, you might as well have a cron script which finds new data in the output folder of the sequencer on some Dropbox storage. This is uploaded on the platform. Some workflow is just launched and your collaborator just receives a notification email with a download the link. Uh, this is really something that can be fully automated uh, at this point. Um, this is how the web interface looks like. Uh, on top you can see uh, buttons called projects and apps. A project is the basic environment where all your work happens. Everything you do refers to a project. And, and this is what the and projects, as I mentioned, can be based on different uh, regions. Um, uh, apps are really uh, programs available on the platform. These include open source and commercial uh, softwares. And uh, actually, if you want to, uh, to say, share your work, your algorithm with a restricted uh, group of users, you can do it by setting the adequate the right permissions in your app. Uh, if you want to publish your new method and share it with the world, you will be able to put it as a public app in the catalog. If you want to do beta testing with a restricted number of users, you can have the possibility of restricting uh, access. And this is how uh, our, uh, a couple of steps for a basic uh, pipeline look like. This is actually something that uh, Kenji mentioned previously, BWA for aligning sequencing data and JPK to perform uh, mutation discovery. And on the left, you have inputs. On the right, you have outputs. And uh, something I should mention, these apps, so the black boxes, are uh, the, 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 the amount of work that goes into integrating your favorite so, uh, tools into an app depends on your requirements. Inputs and outputs depends on how you design the app. We recently introduced Docker support uh, as the first step to uh, generalize containerization support to further facilitate the porting of your favorite tools on the platform. There are uh, a number of tools, for example, uh, PecBio's smart analysis tool for ultra long reads, which are notoriously difficult to install, come with a large number of dependencies. And our software development kit helps you uh, get, uh, bundle the dependencies together, define them in a relatively simple way, and uh, makes you not worry anymore about installation pains. Moreover, um, it is possible to configure your favorite uh, specifications in the interface of these apps. You might configure memory, processors, uh, and uh, storage, uh, depending on your needs. And uh, of course, uh, it's, uh, the cloud, by definition, really provides compute on demand. This is a, a genome assembly. If you're not familiar with it, it can be quite expensive computationally, especially for MacBio. And uh, so something we sometimes do with our partners, we port their tools on the platform, scaling up uh, what uh, these tools can do, going from a local server to uh, the cloud, uh, having uh, as many uh, jobs running as needed. And uh, all of this comes with a, a, um, uh, with a flexible permission system. You can define roles uh, with five le levels of permissions. Uh, permission uh, level zero, of course, no access at all. Viewers can only read uh, data. If you have to share some uh, uh, let's say a master list of workflows with your colleagues that can have read-only access, or if you want to share uh, reports, uh, they can have this level of access. Uploaders can just upload the data, contributors and analysis, administrators edit all these memberships. And most importantly, 
in collaborations, uh, funding uh, is, uh, can be a crucial point, and our permissions also allow you to define which users can access credit from your uh, organization. Uh, actually, and this is also extended to the software you're willing to share. This is just a, a, another example of what I just mentioned. Here you have on top, uh, on top right, C a sequencing service provider. They can only upload data and they consume your credit doing so, but they don't need to buy any credit themselves. Bioinformaticians are running analysis with contribute permissions and clinicians might uh, look at the data. We actually started working with uh, uh, some uh, uh, provider of clinical data analysis and uh, they are using us uh, integrated together with Kaigen's Ingenuity pathway analysis and they automated the workflow of the data. The sequencing service, the sequencing service providers they work with have upload permission. The team, uh, the mathematicians of this company would contribute they run the analysis and then the clinicians in the hospital just recover the reports. And uh, this, this security, this uh, flexibility in permissions make it possible for a companies like Natera to perform uh, non-invasive prenatal testing, for example, by collecting data from multiple small clinics, pulling it together on the platform and delivering reports back, all again in a secure environment. And uh, uh, for genomics analysis, for genetic testing, really one of the main bottlenecks is patient consent, and it can be quite time consuming to acquire it. So you really need a centralized and secure platform to collect all this data, and it's, it's that small clinics, the, 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 the clinicians working in these distributed clinics which have access uh, and, and have, are able to give consent, to get the consent. Of course, this opens the way for interesting partnerships. Uh, we are uh, a partner of uh, Ensemble MD, and our science team has uh, uh, integrated uh, um, uh, UF back on the platform. It's possible to use our uh, to, 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 to run it from our web UI as needed. And of course, you don't have restrictions in terms of how much compute. Uh, you can access depending on the design of your experiment. And this is actually uh, very important for us because despite our name, DNA Nexus, we are completely agnostic respect the data and the software types you can process on the platform. And before somebody asks, an American blogger copyrighted the data Nexus, so we can't do that. So, so sorry about that. Uh, but, 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 but thanks to to, uh, to get back, we are moving into computational chemistry. There is actually, uh, we work a lot with pharma companies, as you can imagine, genomics is only a, a, a part of uh, the analysis they do, and computational chemistry is helping us grow immensely, so we're very thankful for this kind of partnership. It's uh, really great. And uh, to summarize what I said so far, this is um, a scheme of the structure of the platform. At the bottom, you have the different cloud providers in the different regions, Amazon US East, China, and Frankfurt for Europe, and Microsoft Azure, and uh, now just in US Central. We deploy in new regions depending on business cases. We might deploy in the near future on Singapore and Australia, for example. On top of this, you have the core services, single sign-on, our security layer. On top of this, data and collaboration services, the permission systems I mentioned. On the top left, Elastic Compute Service, Compute On Demand. Developer Services, our software development kit to help you port your pipelines. On the top left, uh, uh, scientific pipelines. Uh, and something like what I showed before with BWA and GTK. However, as I mentioned, secondary analysis for us is a solved problem. There is, it's not that interesting at this point to just uh, process uh, pipelines on the platform. There is much more that can be done for scientific discovery. And in yellow, you can see where we are going in the future. We are developing technology to facilitate the integration with uh, software vendors and third parties. We are in, uh, our first step is to introduce Stacks. A stack, in general, is a third party software which will run in a secure and compliant way, encapsulated in our environment. So you might have some commercial software which by itself is not secure and compliant, but launching it as a stack on DNA Nexus will give it uh, that level of security. 
Thanks. Um, so I will. In the last five minutes, I want to mention the most interesting part, the network. Something interesting is that as projects started uh, being developed on the platform, uh, institutions and companies like Bush in Xcode or Cambridge Epigenetics here in the UK or uh, General, they eventually said they found out that others were on the platform and they started working with, with, each, with each other. You can see the General and Geisinger in their own cluster there in the center. But uh, as, the, as uh, more and more data goes on the platform, uh, as more uh, people are uh, processing data, col collaborations become easier and easier. And I already made the example of Regeneron and GSK, who will be working together. And uh, if uh, Regeneron or Novartis want to have access to the data, they might require it to access to a UK biobank. And the data will already be on the same platform they already use. Um, I probably skip this. Another example of a collaboration that, that can be made possible with this network, the image consortium, where you have uh, 25,000 uh, samples being processed by nine uh, partners uh, with two uh, centers, the Baylor College of Medicine, the Broad Institute, central uh, grouping together some of these partners. As you can imagine, for some, a distributed collaboration like this one, you do need security, you do need compliance, you, need, you need, do need to make life easy for the researchers who need to access this data. Uh, this goes well beyond running a pipeline. And as a company, uh, as a, as a, our culture really is based on, we strive to work with everybody. We really have no exclusivity, no limits. Uh, we, we really want to find the best possible solution for the scientists and researchers who use the platform. We work with a number of infra infrastructure providers. We, are, we integrated different LIMS systems. We had some companies like Illumina or Oxford Nanopore might want to develop their own uh, platform and uh, have all the data centralized, but we are open to all sequencing data in, or, or all other kinds of data. And you can integrate different technology on the Nexus without any limitation from our side. And downstream to us, this is where the partnerships come into place. We, work with, we might work with a company like Linguamatics for text mining, Google Genomics for metadata profiling, um, uh, Ensemble MD uh, for um, for UF back, the Station X for interactive visualizations, Bush in Xcode for tertiary analysis. Uh, we work with different partners, and when one of our customers is asking us, could you work with this third party vendor? We really work together with the vendor and our customer to make sure that we can provide the best possible solution. And as our stacks technology develops, we will be able to eventually. Uh, 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 launch custom architectures on the platform, customized for each of these softwares. Our first proof of concept this year, uh, in the next few months, will actually be Jupyter Python Notebooks. It's a small example, but still we'll be able to use Python Notebooks in a secure and compliant environment. And uh, after this, we're already working on bigger, more ambitious stacks, which will involve uh, these partners. Two more, two more minutes. Excellent. Uh, I'm going back to this slide. You can see the light blue box on the top right. Um, the Annexus is actually a, a twofold offering. You have from data collaboration services to the bottom, you have the core infrastructure, and on top, you really have the web interface. And uh, it's something we do for our uh, partners in some cases is uh, creating a dedicated web UI, a portal or a branded uh, page in some cases. But for more ambitious projects like the Precision FDA, the White House hired us as a contractor to build a web-based platform for uh, genomic medicine. When you go on the Precision FDA website, this is actually the Nexus in the back end. And for other companies, for example, we are creating a microbiome uh, uh, dedicated uh, platform. And I think I will... We skip this, and as our marketing team loves saying, the Nexus today is pushing the limits in genomics medicine. Thanks, I will welcome any questions.